Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and I'm here with my dad, Pastor Craig Roders. Woo! Woo! Mountain Dude. <laughs> He's got a shirt for all you podcast listeners. <laughs> Go to YouTube and look at his cool shirt. Yeah, but man. today, we are going to be answering your questions about the end times. And so you guys have sent in your questions like we had our past video. You guys can go check that out. That'll be in the description below. And we were, we're going to answer your questions today. So um, before we get started, my dad's going to pray for us. So Let's pray. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for this day. We ask that you, precious Holy Spirit, would just continue to minister to us, speak to us and through us, Lord. Help us as we study your word today. Remember that you wrote this for simple men and women. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we complicate things and make it so hard. I think sometimes as your word says, not sometimes, but your word says that knowledge puffeth up, but love edifies. Help us to really love and not want to just dazzle people with our knowledge, but to really know your heart and what you're doing. So, Father, we ask that you'll speak to us, speak through us, and just really encourage your people, edify your people, build them up. That's our desire, Lord. As you said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that you've commanded. So, Father, that's our heart. We want to obey you. And we just give you this time, and we ask that you would bless it. In Jesus' most powerful name, amen. Amen. All right, so we are excited to answer your questions today that you guys sent in via email. You guys put them in the comments. You guys messaged me on Instagram. So thank you for doing that. If you guys still have questions, we're going to do more of these maybe like once a month or every other month. So you guys can email me at calvaryov at calvaryov.org. So let's get into the first question. So the first question says, why do you think there's so much contention in the field of pre-trib, post-trib, and mid-trib? And I'll also add all millennial because that's another thing that mm. people put in there is amongst believers. So we'll start with you, Dad. Why, Why do, do you I think, think that? there's so much contention with this? I just I think uh, because there's it says in Daniel that's one of the questions was Daniel says uh, Daniel twelve four says but you Daniel shut up the words and seal the book until the time of the end. Many mm -hmm. shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall increase. And people believe that means knowledge of like just everything. But one, I think it was maybe uh, MacArthur, John MacArthur said, that means knowledge of prophecy or the end times. And we see that is that people are wanting to know more because we know we don't know the day of the hour, right? People will tell you whenever mm -hmm. someone says the time, then you know they're whacked. But we do know that the seasons and we yeah. know we're closer to the end times today than we've ever been. So people are of course interested in that. We want to know, like we want to know what, uh, what we believe, but I believe that, you know, we're going to say, I don't know if this is one of the questions, but how, um, uh, a lot of people say this pre-trib, pre-mill is kind of done in the mm -hmm. 19th century. Yeah. And I love what David Guzik said. It's pretty much, it's not a new doctrine. It's biblical, Mm -hmm. But what happens, the emphasis of it has been like the 19th century. And I believe because why? I believe we're closer to the last days than we've ever been. Mm -hmm. So that's why the emphasis of it. But but church fathers have said that mm -hmm. before. And uh, so this is not a new doctrine. Paul was waiting for the return of Christ. So we need to realize this is not a new doctrine. Maybe the yeah. interpretation, maybe the, the I'm sure it's say the highlighting of it is somewhat new in the 19th century and 20th century. But, uh, but this is not a new doctrine. But I believe the contentions are is because we have a lot of people. And, and I'm going to say this. I'm going to step out. People are going to like this. But I think sometimes I heard, I think it was Dr. Jack Deere mm -hmm. who said, knowledge of the Bible without the Holy Spirit is devilish. Yeah. And I believe there's many people who study the word of God in a natural mindset. Mm -hmm. And what does the Bible say in 1 Corinthians? I think it's two. He says, a natural man does not discern or understand the things of spirit. They are spiritually discerned. So if you're not reading the word of God with the Holy Spirit, I love what my pastor used to do. He put his Bible on his chest and he'd say, Holy Spirit of God, speak to me. Show me your truth. Show me your word. Because how I know the Holy Spirit inspired men to write this book Yep. And so that's how we understand it. And the best commentary on the Bible, as you know, Mariah, is the Bible. Now, I don't care what all these great, great church fathers said, because the Bible also says that men know in part mm -hmm. and prophesy in part. So every man has some area of weakness in their doctrine. Yep. As uh, I'll just say it, 
Mm -hmm. R.C. Sproul. God mm -hmm. bless his heart. You know, he's a scholar, but he believes in infant baptism. Huh. Where is that in the Bible? Now, we believe in infant dedication, de dedicating a baby. Jesus blessed the little children, but nowhere did Jesus baptize. The Bible says in Acts, it says, repent and be baptized. So how does a you know, six month old, we just dedicated Mary, uh, Kevin's baby, mm -hmm. who's eight months old at the time, or maybe nine, but she was not repenting of her, you know, crying and screaming for what she wants. So it's hard to do that. But we dedicated her a couple of weeks ago to say, Lord, may your hand be upon her. May your Holy Spirit draw her. May you protect her and bless her and anoint the parents and grandparents to raise her up in the ways of the Lord. But my point of that is saying not to dog someone else, but mm -hmm. Every one of us, as the Bible says, know in part and prophesy in part. So we have to be careful. And that's why at Calvary here, we do things perfectly. Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just checking to make sure you're listening. No, but what we do is everything I say on Sunday or Wednesday, or whatever we teach, we try to use scriptural references. So that way, if you argue with me, you can argue scripturally. You can say, Wow, okay, Craig has that belief because of the scripture. But a lot of people kind of use the scripture and go way off of it. But we need to back everything we say with Scripture. And I believe that the pre-trib rapture and pre-mill is the most biblically sound doctrine. And I also love what Chuck Smith said real good. Nothing new is true and nothing true is new. Yeah. Now people say, oh, but, but the pre-trib is new. No, it's not. It's been around. And everything we say of this is based biblically. Now, other people might have pre-trib or mid-trib, mid post-trib, all millennial would say they have scriptures. But I will say... A lot of that is allegorical, and I love what another, uh, I don't know if it's Missler, or someone said, if the literal sense makes sense, seek no other sense. And so we see that, and we're going to talk later, but of like um, uh, replacement theology. Mm -hmm. Why do people believe in replacement theology? Because they believe there's no way, and I'm simplifying because I like things simple, but they were saying there's no way Jesus can come back and rule and reign in Jerusalem on the throne of David. Mm -hmm. There's no way because the Arabs have uh, Israel at the time back before 1948. The, the Jews did not occupy Israel. So how could that be? But what did God do? He brought them back into the land in 19, May of 1948, and now it makes sense. But before that, scholars said, ooh, we got to help God out yep. because the, the children of Israel have not been in Israel for seven, over 1,700 years, and no one's ever come back to their homeland when they've been gone for 1,700 years. So there's no way that could be. So it has to be allegorical. Mm -hmm. It has to be that the church is Israel. Well, guess what? Now what's sad about that man-made doctrine, I believe, is now we've done replacement theology where now we say, even we go against scripture where Romans 11 says that God's going to graft the Jew, the true Jew into the vine again. They've been cut off because of rejection of Christ, but they're going to be grafted in again. But when you have replacement theology, you say, hey, there's no need for the Jew. We don't care about the Jewish people. But I know we need to care about the Jewish people Amen. because God cares about the Jewish people. He cares about all people, but he especially cares about the Jewish people. And he says what? In, in uh, Genesis 12, 3, he says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Amen. I don't know about you. I don't need any cursing in my life. Life is hard enough. But he says, you bless my people, you will be blessed. And then it says in Psalms, what? I think it's 122 verse 6. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. All Amen. who love her will prosper. Yep. And I don't know about you, but I, I, I mean, America's flirting with not prospering. America's flirting with going down the tubes. But the one of the reasons I believe we are still so blessed is because of our support of Israel. Now, we know the kind of liberal agenda is that not support Israel. We saw uh, President Obama really not support Israel, not treat uh, uh, the prime minister very well. But how many know we as Christians, hopefully as conservative Christians, biblical Christians, we need to support Israel because of the scripture. Read Romans 11 and tell me God does not care. And I always love it. Can, can we just read it? Can I just, can I read Romans 11? Yep, 11, you, 11. 11, uh, here, let me get that. Where is that? Get Romans 11, 11, hold on a second. Romans. I have it. You want to read it? Yeah, I wait, wait, let me eleven, eleven. Let me read Romans it. I want to read 11, it. 11, but listen to this. I'm going to read. I'm going to read in the New Living because it says it really, 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 really clear. But uh, no, I'm going to read not Romans eleven, nineteen. Well, you may say those branches talking about the Jews were broken off to make room for me. That's us, the Gentiles. Verse twenty. Yes, but remember, those branches were broken off because they didn't believe in Christ. Why is Israel going through the pain it's going through right now? Because it rejected its Savior. We just saw in John chapter ten or John chapter eleven that 
they the the Caiaphas said, "Oh, it's not it's good that one man dies so that we don't lose our place and our nation." But the fact is that their rejection of Christ is what cost them their nation. That's what Jesus said. Not one stone would remain in the temple because they rejected Christ. So hear this, and I want to make a point here. Maybe this is not answering the question, but hear this. It says, "I didn't believe in Christ, and you are there, us Gentiles, because you do believe. So don't think highly of yourself, but fear what could happen." Verse twenty-one: For if God did not spare the original branches, the Jews, He won't spare you either. American Christian, hear that He won't spare you either. Right behind us, the sign that Reagan said. He says, "We are. If we forget that we are a nation under God, we will become a nation gone under." And we have to remember that. So here's what he's saying. There. It says, if God didn't spare the original branches, he won't spare you either. Verse 22, notice how God is both kind and severe. He is severe towards those who disobeyed the Jews because they rejected their Messiah. But kind to you if you continue to trust in his kindness. But if you stop trusting American Christian or all Christians, but I'm speaking to us as Americans who think, oh, we'll always be blessed. If you stop trusting, you also will be cut off. And so, you know, I don't know about you, but have the Jews been, you know, the, his chosen people were cut off because of the rejection of Christ. How many know, America, we too can, you know, a lot of people say we don't have any place in prophecy. You don't see America. Why is that? I believe if that's true, right, I, you know, I don't see it either. But if that's true, it's because we've forgotten God. Yeah. And that's the key. So I want to say, you know, things are going to happen the way they're going to happen. But how many know? We should do our best to restrain evil and to mm. continue to Amen. walk in Christ. Amen. That's good. all I have to say. I think you answered all the questions. <laughs> so that was good. That right, was just a job. good summary of go. everything. Yeah. Um, but the other question was in the book of Daniel, in three places, Daniel 8.26, 12.4, and 12.9, Daniel is told to seal up the book until the end times. I find this so interesting because in all of the other 65 books in the Bible, never is the author told to keep the book sealed. Revelation 22.10, John is told, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, for the time is near. My question is, why do you think the book of Daniel was sealed? And are we in the end times now, which, um, which would mean the book is now unsealed? So, do you Why don't you answer? You can start now. I'll, I'll do clean up. Well, I think that when we when we look at just the book of Daniel, this was written in 600 BC. Correct, mm. correct me yeah, if I'm wrong. Yeah, but um, and Jesus years. was yeah. not revealed yet to humanity during this time, so they cannot fully understand. So I want to read, um, well, Daniel chapter 12. So we'll go to Jan Daniel 12, starting in verse. Eight. So Daniel 12, I don't know what it is, but it's always Daniel that is the hardest book for me to find. It's after Ezekiel. Yep. Okay. Daniel 12, starting in verse 9. And we encourage you guys to turn to these two because we don't want to just be um, people who say like, it's in there, you know, like it's mm -hmm. somewhere. But we want you guys to be able to be Berean and ask questions and to read the word of God. So Daniel chapter 12 starting in verse 8 okay so it says i heard but i did not understand then i said wait sorry i heard but i did not understand then i said oh my lord what shall be the outcome of these things he said go your way daniel for the words are shut up and sealed until the end to to the time of the end Many shall purify themselves and make themselves white and be refined but the wicked shall act wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but those who are wise shall understand so and then we see in revelation where it talks about um she had quoted revelation 22 10 and so we're going to turn there revelation 22 10 it says and he said to me do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is near so Back then, right, in Daniel when he was saying it, they, they couldn't understand these things because Jesus hadn't come yet. But then after, in Revelation, right, Jesus had already come. So they are now able to say um, that the knowledge and prophecy has increased. And so our answer to that question simply is, yes, the book is now unsealed. 
and we are in the end times. And so I think that it also shows that the when it talks about in Daniel 12 and 10, it says the true bride in the church should understand this book. Why? Because we also read Daniel and now it's fulfilled. So that's the cool thing about the Bible and prophecy is that it shows how amazing God is, that it was prophesying um, about all these things and how they're going to come to be. So do you have yeah. anything else with that? Yeah, I would say that too, is that we also understand more because we're in the last days. Yeah. We know we know we're closer to the last days than we've ever been before. Yep. We don't know the day of the hour. We don't know. I love what my Baptist teachers used to tell me. Live like God isn't coming back for another thousand years, but prepare like he's coming back tomorrow. And uh, and I want to say is that with a pre-trib, like we believe a pre-trib rapture, pre-millennial, uh, mm -hmm. thousand-year reign, a literal thousand-year reign of Christ, that we're the only ones that really are waiting for the Lord's return, like for a rapture, yep. because everyone else is going to go through it, right? A lot of the other people want to say they're going through it or they already have, and now we're in the thousand-year reign, all this stuff. But I mean, no, we're the only ones, as it says, be ready because the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. What happens with a thief in the night? You don't know when he's coming. You have yeah. no idea when he's coming. And guess what? If you knew when the burglar was coming, you'd get ready. Now, I'm not calling Jesus a burglar. That's not what I was saying. But it's saying he's going to come when you least expect like it, when you're not re ready, when you're mm -hmm. kind of thinking, oh, it's been, this is the way it's been, as it says in Second uh, Second Peter 3. It's the way he's been forever. We've been talking this forever. But we need to say, hey, we need to be ready. We need to be ready for the Lord's return. But I mm -hmm. want to read what J. Vernon McGee says about this. He says, it's difficult to know just how much we understand. Since so many good men differ today on the interpretation of prophecy, sadly, I've seen it. This is more confusing. I've been a Christian almost this December 5th, 40 years, and I've never seen it this confusing in mm -hmm. my life. And 40 years is a long time to be in ministry. But it's, it's very confusing because why? I think as knowledge increases, you also have a lot of man-made knowledge. Yeah. You have a lot of people on YouTube that are saying mm -hmm. crazy, wacky things. And I, just, I always say this, and maybe this sounds stupid and simplistic to a lot of you, but I always think it's crazy how that, you know, they say us Christians or us pre-tribs are just wanting to escape. But Jesus said, pray. I think it's Luke 21. Is it Luke 21? But he says, pray that you may count it worthy to escape. Well, when Jesus tells you to pray that you might be worthy to escape, how many know you should want to escape? I, If someone's going to shoot me with a gun and I can dodge that bullet, I'm going to try to dodge that bullet. Now, we will say this. We do not know how much we're going to go through before we're raptured. We don't know. We don't know. But if you go through a pre, if you, if you, anyway, I'm kind of answering a different question. Let me go back. But it says, difficult to know how much we understand since so many good men differ today on their interpretation of prophecy. It would seem to indicate that there is much that we do not understand. All of this will be opened up when we reach a particular period. And what's that period? The 70th week of Daniel. Once the rapture, if, if the church is raptured out and you're still here, then you know you're in it. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people say, oh, mid trip, they say, oh, we're going to we're going to you know, we're going to see we're going to go right till the three and a half years, the first three and a half years. But then you might see the uh, the abomination of desolation where Satan makes a statue of himself in the temple and demands to be worshipped. OK, well, then we know three and a half years from then is that the, is the thousand year reign of Christ. Three and a half years. It's from that day is three and a half years. So there's a marker. But. You know, and then if you go all the way through it, you go all the way through it. There's nothing. Where is that? Be ready like mm -hmm. a thief in the night. Where is that? And as it says, I believe it's First John three three. Is it First John three three? Mm -hmm. it says all who have this hope. What's the hope that Jesus could return at any moment? Will keep themselves pure, just as He's pure. If you know that God could come in a twinkling of an eye, instantly you are going to keep yourself pure. Because you know daddy can come back. It's kind of like I used to say when I was a pagan and I threw parties. If I knew my, my, my aunt was going to come home at a certain time, I wouldn't throw a party right before she came home. I would be getting the house cleaned up and ready for her to come back. Well, the same is with the Lord. If we know the Lord could come back in the twinkling of an eye, that's a one little blink of an eye, then we are going to be ready. But if we think, oh, mm -hmm. we're going to go through it, all this, what's our hope? What, what's the hope if we're going through it? Now they'd say, "Oh, the hope is that we're going to be preserved and all this." But h how do you buy or how do you survive if you if you can't buy or sell? Yeah. I love when people say that. My one good friend Greg, he is prepping. He's got bows and arrows. He's got his own water. He's got solar. He's got food for like two years. He's got a bunch of a big herd of elk. He's in Oregon. He can hunt. 
He knows how to hunt. He's all prepared. But how many know if we live in the city and you say you believe in mid trip or post trip? God bless you. Then why aren't you prepping? Why aren't you going moving out in the middle of no moving up to Oregon or somewhere where there's elk and deer and water and stuff? Because I tell you, in Tucson, Arizona, it would be pretty hard to not build a buy or sell. But anyways, mm -hmm. but um, here this it says this reason because everything's so crazy. This reason we need to keep our eyes upon the one thing. And Titus 2.13 says this, 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God. Here's where it says Jesus is God. Our great, one of the places it says we're our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Looking forward. Did you hear that? Looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the reason a pre-trib rapture is the only one that has that belief that he could come back like that. Yeah. And so that's it. That's the key. That's why. And, and, and I guess I'll say what David Guzik said. Why do we, you know, I, I think I'm jumping ahead of question, but it's like, why do we believe in a pre-trib rapture or what's the question? But it's like, we, we believe this because the Bible supports it. A lot of our beliefs comes by Luther and church historians, but how many know what it's saying? Corinthians again, I don't know if it's first Corinthians two or three, but it says, I'm of Paul. Mm -hmm. I'm of Apollos. And what does he say? Does that not show your carnality? Mm -hmm. When you follow a man or a, even a church father, I'm not saying don't respect those church fathers, but I'm saying if you say, hey, so-and-so mm -hmm. so said this, who cares what so-and-so said unless mm -hmm. there's clear, clear biblical scripture to mm -hmm. support it? And mm -hmm. so many things we believe because some great scholar said it, but there's no, like I said, R.C. Sproul. How do you justify biblically infant baptism? How? There is nothing that I've seen. I've read the Bible for 40 years. I never, there's not one scripture that would infer infant baptism that I've seen. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's his thing. And we have to be careful that we don't try to put our thing into the word of God or say, well, I believe this and because I'm Craig Roeders, you should believe it. Don't believe me. Don't believe a word I say unless it's back with Scripture. We sh you should be a Berean. When we say something, you should check with Scripture. And I don't care. And hear this, guys. Can I just say this? I'm preaching here. A little preacher's coming out. But hear this. With all these YouTube people, with all this craziness, how many know Satan, it says in the last days, will be doctrines of demons? How many know Satan can make, can twist Scripture? He tried to twist Scripture with Jesus. He, mis he, he manipulated Psalms 91. Right, saying, jump off the temple. He'll protect you, He'll give charges angels to protect you from striking your foot on a stone. It was a misinterpret of the word of God. So you don't think demons can misinterpret last day's stuff and get people weird and fearful? But all I can say is, I'm going to say this, and this might be off topic, I'm sorry, but is people say, but look at the Chinese Christians. They've gone through torture. They've gone through suffering. Look at the uh, Afghani Christians. Look at the uh, um, uh you know, you name it all over the world, but that's the wrath of Satan. But in the last days at the end of, of, of revelation six seventeen, I believe it says what, this is the wrath of lamb. This is God pouring on his wrath on a Christ rejecting world. Totally different. So God, what it says in, in first Thessalonians five, nine, he's not appointed us Christians to wrath. Why? Cause we don't deserve wrath. We deserve wrath. But because of Jesus took our wrath on the cross, we don't have the wrath of God on us. Yeah. So that's why I believe also biblically, just like God rescued Lot, and I argue, even though he's in the hall of faith in a, for Hebrews 11, I argue that, that, that Lot wasn't the most godly man. Remember, he wanted to give his daughters. Now, I know it's culture and all that. But he wanted to give his daughters to the, to the guys in Sodom that wanted to rape the two angels. Mm -hmm. But guess what? He was delivered out of out of Sodom and Gomorrah before God destroyed it. And remember what Abraham said? Hey, would you do this for 50 righteous men? Would you destroy the city? And he says, no. Then he went down lower, lower, lower. He kept doing it. He kept asking down to 10 people. Most scholars believe he would have done it for one righteous man. Mm -hmm. So guess what? Even in America, despite all our sin, despite all our pornography, despite all the crazy stuff we do of Hollywood, there's still a remnant. And God is going to, I believe, rapture us, snatch us away before he pours out his wrath on a Christ rejecting rule. Amen. It's good. I kind of, I kind of went no, off you, the case, And so. you already answered this next question, which is how to know if what people are teaching about the end times is false, yeah. which we already answered, right? Whether it's well, man's opinion or it's I got to say scripture. that before we get, hear this. 
a lot of times too, as I said earlier about uh, about like replacement theology, mm -hmm. a lot of people try to help God out. God isn't that amazing. Scholars trying to help God out, mm -hmm. like He needs our help. Amen. I love what one person said about the Bible. This is that that many people have shredded the Bible. I don't, who was it? Is it Voltaire? Who was it who said that, that God is dead? Was it Voltaire? I forget. Right. Voltaire, I don't know who it was, some French guy, I think it was Voltaire, said God is dead. And now they use his house. They used to, they began to use his house every died. I think he went insane and his house became a printing press for the Bible. Okay. The Bible is the anvil that has worn out many a hammer. Okay. We don't have to defend the Bible. As, as uh, Spurgeon said, the word of God is like a lion. All you have to do is let it out. And it'll, it'll defend itself. And so anyway, back to what was the, the so the it question. It was Voltaire. Was, yeah. And yes, the question was how to know if yeah. what people are teaching about the end times is false. That's it. Is that where you have people trying to spiritualize things. And I love, again, like I said earlier, he said this, is that uh, when the literal sense makes sense, seek no other sense. So when the Bible says a thousand year reign of Christ, how many know that? Why wouldn't that mean the thousand year reign of Christ? But when it says in Psalms that God covers us with his wings, does that mean Jesus is a big chicken? No, it's a picture. It's an allegory of him covering us like a hand broods over chicks. So we need to realize that. So, right, that would make sense that God's a chicken. Is God a, is he's a big bird? No, it's a picture. It's an allegory. But when it says a thousand year reign of Christ, why do we have to always spiritually? Well, we do that to kind of help God out to make, make sense. But just, I will go back to just like when the replacement theology people said, Hey, uh, this, this can't be a literal, you know, him ruling and reigning from the throne of David in Jerusalem. We can't do it because the Jews aren't back there. Well, guess what God did after 1700 years, he brought the children of Israel back to the land and miraculously, and that's a long story, but he brought him back. And guess what? Now it makes sense. But have people given up the doctrine of replacement theology? No, mm -mm. because men are prideful. But guess what? That doctrine isn't needed anymore. That, I believe, wrong doctrine isn't needed. But you see, my point is they tried to help God out. So what we want to do is when the Bible's, when, when the literal sense makes sense, seek no other sense, mm -hmm. that I believe that revelation is really in, easy once you, and you use the divine outline of first uh, yeah, revelation yeah, one, yeah, is it one eighteen? I always forget where it is, the divine outline, but there's the divine, the things that have been, that's the glorified Christ, the things that are, the church age, and then the things that will come, the things to come, and that's revelation. And those are the it's three steps. 118, yeah, did I say that? 19. 19, I'm sorry. And so you've got, so first chapter one is talking about revelation, glorified Christ, talking about Jesus glorified, seated, glorified, and his, you know, sword and mm -hmm. his hair white, his sword, a flame, his eyes are a flame of fire. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the church age, chapters two, two and, and three. three. Then you got the rest is pretty much uh, three, what's Four and five are rapture, six through 19, yeah. the tribulation period. And 20 is the Millennium Kingdom. And but, if, then, but if you simplify it, it's just chapter one, yeah. glorified Christ, the yeah. things that are, the things are things that were, mm -hmm. things happen already. Things that are is the church age right mm -hmm. now. And the things that will come is from chapters uh, basically four on. You know, and, you know, and that's where you, you don't hear about the church anymore. Yep. So, but anyway, I, I just say all that to say is that uh, how do we have all these different doctrines? Because we have a lot of different men trying to spiritualize and quoting our old fathers. But hear this, I believe that a lot of these people, as we were talking to one person who believes this, they've just given up on it. Mm -hmm. They don't even, but yeah. at least I, if you ask me why I believe something biblically, not ask me what so-and-so said, I can show you biblically why I believe in a pre-trib rapture. I can show you from the word of God. I don't say, well, so-and-so said this and so-and-so said that. I don't really care what so-and-so says. I care what God says. And if you're going to show me something, show me it through mm -hmm. the word of yeah. God. And, one of my and teachers, make it clearly. Don't have to juggle yeah. and do this and say, you got to look at it sideways. You know, and one of my teachers clear. from like in Liberty, they apologize because they were starting to take um, one of them, well, not, I don't know if Liberty, but one of the professors was starting to take the view of replacement theology and he had to humble himself and apologize because he was realizing he was just doing that because that's what everyone else is doing. Right. Yeah. Like kind of thinking like, that's a, well, cool a thing. scholar that I know believe that. So, yeah. you know, let's just believe cause there's more people believing it and we have to be very careful with it. Cause even when you think of it, the ways of the enemy, well, it says the way is 
it's like a lot more people are going to follow Satan. We already know that in the way of the Lord. It's like it's narrow and few will find it. So mm -hmm. we have to be careful with that. But um, another, so we have already answered this question, but it was the what is replacement theology and why is this false? So it was a lot of people think that premillennials, which uh, we are pre-mill, um, they believe that we believe that <laughs> basically because the person who started this um this theology was Justin Martyr, and he was a premillennialist, and his view was that the Christian church um, is the true spiritual Israel, and so basically that we replaced or superseded the Jews, and we definitely know, like my dad had read, well, yeah, in Romans 11, mm -hmm. that that's not true. And then there's also, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, I just heard about it recently, but it's the Palestinian Liberation Theology, theology which even goes a step further to say that the jews have never had a place of favor and in the in the first place so well they also believe they also believe that ishmael is the promise exactly so, a little whack at that i think we're pretty clear on that in the bible yeah so there's so many different things that we need to look at we need to look at obviously scripture too which we talked about in our last video but psalm 122 verse 6 which you had mentioned pray for the peace of jerusalem may those who love you be secure so we all want to be secure right so we need to yeah and prosper so and america need needs to, to prosper because we're giving all our money away right amen <laughs> and so we need to make sure that as like with everything that we're going through i love the um, the there's like Jerusalem and how it's spelled and in the middle of it is USA, but how we can't just try to be like, Oh, the USA, like, let's just, we also need to pray and support Israel because I mean, well, think about it. Think about replacement theology. I'm pretty sure Martin Luther believed that. Right. And so Martin Luther, he said he called Jews Christ killers. And I think mm. later I heard he recanted, but how we know that helped motivate Hitler yeah. Because then he had a scapegoat of these people that killed Christ. But here's the truth. Exactly. All of us killed Christ. Amen. Because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So guess what? Your sin killed Christ. Have you sinned? Yes. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, the Bible says. So all of us killed Christ. Because if Christ didn't die, then guess what? You and I would not be saved. Yeah. So guess what? The Jews did not kill Christ. They might have been the physical people, right, who kind of the Pharisees had offered him up, but it was our sin that killed Christ. So there it is. Martin Luther, great reformer. He brought us from works-based Christianity to what? Christ plus nothing. Christ, faith, you know, faith in Christ alone. But guess what? He even missed it, as I said. And that's why it's so important not to follow a man, but to follow the word of God because we all know in part and prophesy in part. Amen. So I will say to you humbly, I do not intentionally try to say something wrong, but guess what? I am a human and we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. We know in part and prophesy in part. So that doesn't mean an excuse to like have wrong doctrine, but to know humbly that there could be areas where I am off or I miss the perfect intent of God. But guess what? Hopefully we're all humble enough that we see it. Oh my goodness. But again, I will say this back to this. Nothing true is new and nothing new is true. So it's like you have to realize that, you know, think about this when I always say this. And David Guzik said this really well. He said that that we base it on scripture. A lot of people base it on church history, on men, but guess what? We base it on scripture. And we need to do that, get back to the Word of God, because that's what gives us our anchor or our faith. When we quote church fathers, when we say, but so-and-so said this, like Mariah said, oh, well, this is the new trend to be replacement theology. Guess what? You're, you're troubled waters because guess what? Now you're rejecting the Jewish people. And what did it just say? If you reject he says if you do not continue to believe yep. and i would say this prophetically american christian then you too will be cut off if god could cut off his chosen people the jews because they rejected jesus how much more will it can he cut us off so just be humble and say hey you know let's keep close to jesus and let's pray for the mm -hmm. how we know most of the true jews 
are going to get saved in the tribulational period. There's going to be the 144,000 evangelists, Jewish evangelists, that will share Christ. There's going to be the two witnesses. There's going to be an angel flying across the sky. Have we seen that yet? We haven't seen that, right? We have people say we're in it, but uh, or we're going to, yeah, I don't know. I guess we're the Belitio okay, King. We've already passed that, but I didn't see that. I didn't hear about that in history. Did you hear about that? I didn't hear about no. the two witnesses. But you know what I mean? So we have a, the Jewish people are going to find Christ sadly. In the tribulation, a lot of them are going to die. They're going to be tribulational saints. There's going to be martyred tribulational saints. But I mean, oh, that's why too. Uh, most of the churches that that really evangelize are believe in a pre-trib because why? They know, hey, we we want no one to have to go through this, go through the the hard time of the tribulation where God pours out His wrath, and hear this. Now, other people, right? Uh, I guess as it would be all mill or whatever, Dominion Theology believe we're going to take over the earth. Now, I don't know about you. Do you ever watch Fox News? Do you ever watch the news? If we're going to take over the earth, I tell you, I get depressed sometimes Mm -hmm. with the state of our country and the insanity of our our, our government right now. Mm -hmm. But I know it's going to get worse before it gets better. But if I have to believe that I'm going to usher in the kingdom of God and Dominion Theology, Oh my goodness. And I can talk about mm-hmm. someone who's in Phoenix with a long beard who believes that. And that's insanity because it just, it, I mean, I'm not saying God couldn't do it, but it is nuts because yeah. our world is falling apart quickly, faster. Like I said, I knew it was going to get worse before it gets better, but I didn't think it would happen this quick. Amen. Yeah, that's true. And then the other thing, the question that we've been kind of answering, but says is the theory only 200 years old and why they're asking this or people are saying this is because many people believe that this woman named margaret mcdonald 12 year old girl wasn't she um it was a scottish girl um i don't know she would see visions and stuff and things like that she was in the charismatic movement back then but they ended up finding out and disproving the things she had done so then because she had they think that she's the founder of pre-trip pre mill which is not true and there's actually a really good article which i'll link down below that you guys can check out and this article is basically um it says why the doctrine of pre-tribulation rapture did not begin begin with margaret mcdonald so you guys can we don't have a lot of time we only have 15 more minutes so i won't have to, i won't have time to get into that necessarily but i'll put that down below and maybe we'll do another podcast episode on that but another thing um it was it was basically like what my dad was saying the doctrine is not just being focused on like we shouldn't focus our doctrine on a person and what they believe but on the word of god and that's what we're praying that we're we're doing and that we're not just saying like oh well this found this i was about to say founding father but this um church father he said this so that's what we're gonna believe we don't want to do that and so i'm just gonna um, say this, that it says um, the church did not invent the doctrine of the Trinity, right? We didn't invent that, but it wasn't given full thought until the third and fourth centuries. So there you go. But are we going to say that Oh, yeah, the, the, they person. just made it up? Yeah. Okay. And then to um, the second and fourth centuries that their main focus was scripture, right? And then the, f- um, and then the fourth was the Trinity. The fifth was Christ. Um, uh, the fifth form, and the sith, reformation of mm-hmm. Christ only. And then Christ. the fifth and seventh was a doctrine of man. The sixteenth through seventeenth was a do- was a doctrine of salvation, and then the sixteenth and seventeenth was also a doctrine of the church. Nineteenth and twentieth, the last things in Christ's return, which is basically eschatology, the end times. So, for people to basically say that this is something that is made up. What makes me sad even more so is that we're seeing the end times more. So like there's more knowledge about it and prophecies are fulfilled, right? Even um, it was the whole thing with um, we're talking about replacement theology, May 14th, 1948, when Israel became a nation, right? In our minds that it doesn't make sense. Like I can see why people in their own panic would be like, hey, replacement theology. Mm -hmm. But when that happens, even more so, that's just saying, Hey, no way can we even think that. But it is like David Guzik, he was talking about, he's saying it's a weak argument because they're arguing these things based off of, oh, well, 
the founding fa- or the founding fa- I keep saying the founding fathers. The church fathers did not talk about this, but if you see, this is a theme throughout Scripture. So why we're saying these things of the rapture is not something we just made up or this Scottish girl made up and we're following her. No, it's something that has been throughout oh, yeah. even church history in little moments in spurts but they haven't based the whole theology on it yet because it wasn't important and as well I, to I have them. scripture that fits for you right what you're saying right, right, right what you were saying mariah that's exactly it's second thessalonians three ten. it says for even talking about the last days it says for even when we were with you we commanded mm. you this if anyone will not work neither shall he eat mm. So do you hear that? What was that? Same because man. people were saying, hey, the Lord's returning, because this is what Thessalonians is talking about, second, first, and seventh. They're talking about the Lord's return. But he's saying, hey, the Lord's coming back. Well, then let's just let's just uh, you know sell everything we have and sit on a mountain and pray. And that's what the, some scholars say these people were doing. And so we're saying, no, 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 no. Yeah. Like the Baptist. Live like he's coming back tomorrow, but plan like he's not coming back for another 100 years yeah. or 1,000 years. So do you see what I'm saying? So they were just saying, so they were hoping for the Lord's return. Paul was hoping for the Lord's return. So to say that this is a new thing, it's not a new thing. That was the hope. I mean, Paul thought, hey, you know, I, I, I could come back any moment. Okay, so we have to know that is not a new thing. That is a biblical thing, and we need to believe it. And I believe, too, like I will go back to what I said, like Lot, like a Noah, were these men perfect? Absolutely mm-hmm. not. But because they love God, because they trusted God, God let them escape what? Lot escaped fire and brimstone, destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, which is kind of like America today now is becoming. And guess what? I remember what Billy Graham said, if God doesn't destroy, if God doesn't judge America, he's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. So yeah. we're just as evil, but Why? Why did God pull out in uh, in the time of law? He pulled Lot out of that destruction. Why? Because God is merciful. Because He's gracious. He's gracious to righteous men and women who have put their faith in Him. And why would God let Noah go through the flood unharmed, pretty much in a boat, right, and let everyone else drown? Because why? He warned the people for almost a hundred years, but they all laughed at him. But so God wants His people to not go through wrath not go through his judgment because he's a merciful. So how much more will God spare us, not because we deserve it, but because of his mercy, because of 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, God has not appointed us to wrath, but to him salvation through Jesus Christ. So why? Because God is merciful, because God took our wrath, and guess what? Again, I cannot emphasize it enough. In the last, in the tribulation period, it's not going to be just Satan's wrath. Right now, any Christian who suffers is because of Satan's wrath. Amen. It's because of Satan working through evil governments, working through people. That's Satan's wrath. But the wrath that will happen in the tribulation period is the wrath of God. Satan will still be yeah. moving too, right? The Antichrist, but it's going to be God's wrath poured out on a Christ rejecting world. That's why. We should have the heart to share Christ with everyone possible so that no one has to go through. So we can, as Jesus, was it Luke 21? Pray that you might be kind of worthy to escape. Did we figure that out? What verse that is? But I think it's Luke 21. But pray that you may be kind of worthy to escape. Because why? Why would you be kind of worthy? Because you put your faith in Christ. Not because you're good enough. Not because you pray enough. Not because you you tithe. Is it what? Luke 21, 36. Luke 21, 36. And think about it. Read it so everyone can hear it. It says, um, sorry, this one is King James. Okay. Yeah. Keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these thing, these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. There you go. That you might be counted worth, counted worth, was it say counted worthy? Or able to escape. But do you see that? Enough, so yeah. strong enough, I think. What is that old King James or what is that? That was just uh, New Living, but ESV also says, yeah, have the strength to escape these things that are going to take place. Yeah. So how, how is that? Because you have your faith in Christ, and that's the key, and that's what we want to preface or you know make the emphasis on is Christ. And we just encourage you to do that. Put your faith in Christ. Mm-hmm. Look at this. Revelation is not to scare you. But to prepare you. Now, I don't know about you, right? That he says, it, we read in Thessalonians where it says, Thessalonians, was it five? Listen to this. Let me read this to you. Can I read this? Let me read this. Five. 
Is it first? Thess- second? Yeah, oh, it's first. first is it first? Thessalonians five, five two. Oh, I say second. Sorry, First Thessalonians five. Listen to this. This is so good. This should tell us everything concerning the times and the seasons. Talking about the end times, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. Verse two: For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. So what is he saying? Hey. We don't know the day of the hour. He could come at any moment. So be ready, church. Be ready. That's yeah. what he's saying. Thief in the night. That's what a thief means. It doesn't mean Jesus steals stuff. It means he could come like a thief unexpectedly. Because if you knew when a thief was coming, you go, hey, what's going on? Right? Verse 3. For when they say, which a lot of people are saying, right? Especially if you're saying we're going through it right now or we've already gone through it. They could say... Uh, peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as a labor pains upon a pregnant woman. They shall not escape. Hear this. I've heard people say this. Well, the reason why I don't believe in a pre-trip rapture that we're going to go through it halfway, mid-trip or or post-trip, because they said you are not preparing people to go through hard times. Um, Guys, you've never heard me say that it's going to be easy and then all of a sudden we're out of here. It's going to get bad. We don't know how bad it's going to get before the Lord raptures us, but we know it's going to get bad. But the difference is what I believe is the Roman, or I'm sorry, the Revelation 6, 17, that what God is going to pull us out, snatch away. That's what that's what caught up means in 1 Thessalonians 4, 17. It's, that's where we get the word raptus or rap, rap, rapio, I think yeah, I always mess it up yeah. in, the, in the Latin, rapio, sure. where we get the word rapture because people say rapture is not the Bible. That's where we get it from is rapio, which means you snatch away. But why is he snatching us away? He's snatching us away because things are getting crazy and because God is getting ready to pour out his wrath, Revelation 6, 17, on a Christ-rejecting world. That's why we're going to be snatched away, just like Lot was taken away by the angels before God poured out his wrath on uh, on a God-rejecting Sodom. And so he, that's what I'm saying. But oh, he says, let me say this, destruction comes upon him. So hear this. They say, well, you're not preparing people to go through hard times. Okay, how do you prepare for the revelation? How mm-hmm. do you prepare for 100-pound hailstones? How do you prepare for not being able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast? How, how do you prepare for that? I don't know how you prepare for that. Mm-hmm. And most of these people that say this are not doing that. Mm-hmm. They should have food for at least three and a half years. They should be able to have money stashed away. They should be able to live in the middle of nowhere. So if you're living in a city saying you'll be even mid and post, prove it to me by moving out to Montana or Oregon or wherever you could have lots of natural resources because Arizona would be pretty hard. Can we agree? Oh, yeah. It'd be pretty hard to live in Arizona. There's not a lot of deer. You look, it's funny, Wyoming, where my family's from, Jackson Hole, a lot of them are from. They have cowdies that look like wolves. Mm-hmm. Our cowdies look like they're just like a little dead dog. But they have cowdies that look like wolves. My kids thought, is that a wolf? And it's a cowdy. Okay. But guess what? The only problem is Wyoming, Jackson, gets sometimes 40, 50 below zero. So that'd be a little mm-hmm. rough to live outside. So anyway, I'm just saying is I, I think I'm not wanting an easy life. But I'm saying is we are not the main thing I will fight on is that, uh, and I'll stand strong, I should say, not fight, hopefully but is that this is God pouring out his wrath. Yeah. And I believe you read that in Revelation 6, 17, and God's not appointed us to wrath. God's not going to pour out his wrath. Now people say, oh, but he'll protect us in the midst of that. He'll protect the 144,000 Jews. That's scriptural because it says they're sealed. And a lot of scholars believe that sealing means a protection. But most every other tribulational mm-hmm. saint is going to possibly, a good chance you're going to die because you're not going to be able to buy or sell. And then mm-hmm. the enemy... The Antichrist is going to come after you. And, and and can I just say this? I'm going to be weird here. It's time to go, isn't it, Mariah? Mm-hmm. But how many know this? Some of you know this, some of you don't. But I had COVID, and I was in the hospital. And I was like, God, why did I have COVID? Why did I go to the hospital? Everyone else just has it for two or three days, maybe three or four weeks. But I had it where I almost died. And I know I'm a little chubby, of course, <laughs> so that doesn't help. But I was like, why? I hear, you know, uh, Dennis Prager had it for three days. Joe Rogan, all these other people, or I forget, Trump had it, and he just. But they had the special cocktail that I, us pagans or, or us little poor people don't have. But anyways, <laughs> but it's like um, I just lost my train. What was I saying? The COVID brain. Oh, oh COVID brain. Yeah, there it is, COVID brain. But I'm saying is what why I went in there is I saw that we have never been so polarized in all of my 59 years. Mm-hmm. That's is crazy. I mean, there's a hatred mm-hmm. for 
conservatives. There's a hatred for Christians like I have never seen. And guess what? I am not a conspiracy guy. My wife's a little more conspiratorial than I, but hear this. There is a hatred like I've never seen. I was told, why did you not take the mark of the vaccine? No, okay. Why didn't you take the vaccine? And I said, well, has I had blood clots like two and a half years ago. So one of the things is blood clots. I don't want to do it. You're an idiot. Take it. And I was like, what is going on? But hear this, guys. What is it? Because we are getting so polarized because why? What is happening? What's the vaccine? Is the vaccine a mark of the beast? No. Absolutely not. But it's pre-mark of the beast. It's getting us to where we don't, we give up our freedoms. We trust government to be our God. And we say, hey, the government can tell me what I need to do, can force me to do whatever, and I'll just comply. Don't you see how that's kind of pre Mark of the beast. It's getting us ready to say, hey, you got to take this mark. You got to pledge your life to the beast because if you don't, you're not going to have this mark, this chip that makes it so convenient. Now tell me, guys, wouldn't it be convenient to have a chip? I mean, I always forget my passcodes all the time. Wouldn't it be neat just scan everything in your head if you don't have a right hand? But guess what? It's going to, and hear this, it's not going to be a whoops. You're not going to by accident take the mark. It's a pledging yourself yeah. to the beast. The so hear this. But guess what, guys? I'm going to end with this, and then I can make bring it back to a point. But hear this. I love what Del Tackett said. If you want government to be your God, you want government to pay for your schooling, you want government to give illegal aliens 450000 per person, a million a family, you want government to basically be your God, then realize government will demand to be worshipped as God. Yeah. But we have to, as Christians, say, I don't want government to be my God. I don't mm -hmm. want to disrespect government. I want to try to submit to the authorities, right, as unto the Lord. But hear this. My provider is not government. No. My provider is Jesus Christ. He's Jehovah Jireh. Mm -hmm. And we need to commit ourselves to him. Amen? Amen. And so what I'm saying is I saw through having COVID and all the hostility I got because I didn't take the vaccine. I mean, crazy, isn't it? Think about this. People in, in the early 80s, about eight, 83, they had AIDS virus. That was primarily a virus that was from unprotected gay sex. That was from uh, using, using uh, already used needles, spreading HIV. But nowhere did they say, hey, you brought this upon yourself. You don't get treated. Yeah. Yet you have people proposing that if people don't take the vaccine, they don't get treated in a hospital. Mm -hmm. How insane is that? But that is America we're living at. In, and Why? Because we are forgetting God. Yeah. How do you get us back to sanity? Bring us back to God. Bring us back to the simplicity of God's word. And we will have sanity again. Because the scripture says in Isaiah 520, I believe it says, In the last days, black will be called white. White will be called black. Good will be called evil. Right? Bitter will be called sweet. Everything's going to be backwards. And we see that today. Right is wrong. Wrong is right. But guess what, Christian? If you want peace, then give your heart to Christ. Surrender your heart. All you have to do is pray a prayer. Lord Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. Yeah. Please forgive me my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Come and live in my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to live for you all the days of my life. And if you pray that prayer and mean it, you're saved. You don't have to worry about this. God will take care. And even if we go through hard times, not seeing the tribulation, but hard times, to where we before we're raptured, mm -hmm. God is going to give you strength. And guess what? You can't really prepare for it, right? You can't whoo, whoo, lift weights and like crowd, <laughs> kung fu. You can't. How many have you got? Hard, hundred pounds. Hundred pounds. What? I mean, it's going to rip through any ceiling of any house, yeah. right? A five pound ones do. Mm -hmm. Hundred pounds is going to rip through and probably crack your foundation. So guess what? Love God. Trust Him to give you strength to get through whatever, because He'll never let you be tempted. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He'll never let you tempt, be tempted by what you can handle, but it'll always provide a way of escape. Amen. I'm done preaching. Amen. That's good. I love that. And like to wrap it up too, like that's what we believe that we, we just need to be ready and prepared, not in the ways of preppers, but purifying our lives, yeah. right? All who have this hope within them is 1 John 3, 3, I think, yeah. will keep themselves pure. So we've said it in the last video. We're going to say it keep until the day. That we die or rupture or rapture until the day we're raptured or um, 
the day that we die. But um, so we didn't get it to get into all the other questions, but we want to do other videos on because I know there's been some questions on like the seven seals, the trumpet plagues, the last plagues and all that. So we'll do maybe an episode on that. We'll also probably um, do an episode because we had a lot of questions on the millennium and the thousand year reign of peace. So we'll do that as well. And some other things um, that we really we want to. I don't know, just talk about is just being able to just have hope throughout this and not like my dad always says, this isn't supposed to scare you, but prepare you. So my encouragement to you, I was able to do this today is if you guys don't have the U version Bible app, I was able to just listen to the audio of revelation again, revelation, not revelations, yeah, revelation, one Davis revelation, <laughs> but, um, we just want to encourage you guys to read it, but also it was really cool for me to just listen to it for all those who hear the, it talks about will be blessed but i was and who read these words but just listening to it it was so powerful um i was just listening to it in the esv and i encourage you guys to do that because it just made it so clear like this is this is going to happen like this has clearly not happened yet these things in the planks but anyway um so that's all we have but again thank you so much for joining us if you haven't already please make sure to like subscribe and share this vi this video and you guys can also go back and watch our video that we've done before that will be in the description below if you guys are still have questions you can email me at calvaryov at calvaryov.org also if you would like to just listen to us wherever you get your podcast whether that's spotify or apple Podcasts, or whatever just type in calvary conversations and you guys can um, follow us there and on itunes leave a five-star review we've been telling everyone to do that and um we also have our instagram so you can follow us and check out our behind the scenes send in your questions there as well and that is at calvary conversations you can also um support um calvary conversations by giving a one-time gift or a monthly gift by going in the description below and doing that so that we can get more amazing guests um to come to Calvary Valley and you guys can see them. So I don't know when this video is coming out, but I think Brian Sumner will have already come. So we've had Brian Sumner, we've had Charlie Kirk, we had Steven Bancars, we had Seth Gruber, and so we have many more exciting guests. So you guys can end just, with the scripture? What? Want to end with the scripture? End with the scripture. Luke 21, 28. Lift up your heads because your redemption draws Amen. near. That's the key. Don't look for the Antichrist. Don't look yeah. for trouble. Look for Jesus because he's going to come in the twinkling of an eye. And that is our blessed hope. That's what gets us excited. We don't really care about the Antichrist because guess what? We should know about the Bible teaches. But how we know if you're in Christ, I believe with all of my heart biblically that you are not going to see the Antichrist. Because he, once we're taken out, the restrainer, the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit will still be here, but we'll be taken out the church and then he'll be loosed come upon the earth mm -hmm. amen and so that's why we say look up be ready for the lord's that's return me. give hope and guess what christians the big temptation is to say ah we've been talking about the lord's return forever but guess what that's the time he's going to return when you don't think he's going to return so amen. today's the and day. read today's the word of god day. we are in the book yeah. of daniel right now so if you guys for on wednesday nights from 7 to 8 30 so you guys are able not able to come in person you guys can watch that um, for our midweek studies, we're doing that, which, right, that's goes hand in hand with, Re with Revelation. Um, and another thing is, thank you so much to our sponsors, Mission Heating and Cooling. If you guys want to check them out, you guys can go to the description below and check out their website. And I think that's it. I had fun. Right, then. Found it. Thank you. Thank Noggin. You. Love you. All right. Love you guys. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. God bless. Bless you.